Good morning, it's Kyle Coberline at Bluegrass International in Georgetown, Kentucky. As you can tell, the Kentucky allergies are getting the best of me here lately, but I'll try my best. Um, I'm part of the sales team here. I'm proud to be at Bluegrass, and today I'm gonna do a detailed walk around on this 2024 Renegade Verona VRB. It's the rear uh, bath. Um, of course, it's got the cab over bunk on it as well. The exterior color is in propulsion interior is Athens and uh, we'll just get to it. So when I'm doing a walk around of one of the motor homes I always like to start under the engine compartment. You know one of the biggest benefits and perks to a Super C and being on a commercial truck chassis is the fact of the serviceability. So you don't have a big diesel engine that's underneath of a bed in the back like a Class A motor home. This is extremely easy to service. You tilt the hood forward you know for over a decade now in the commercial industry, you know, we've been using a lot of translucent reservoirs. So you can easily see your fuel filter if you had any water sitting in your fuel here at the bottom. And of course your power steering, and of course you've got your radiator coolant on the other side. Uh, one of the things I like to point out to people underneath the hood is, you know, people like to keep things clean and shiny. Do not pressure wash underneath your hood. I mean, if you really want it to look showroom underneath the hood, you need to get somebody or yourself to wipe it down with a rag. There's a lot of electronics, electronic connection points. You know, you can cause issues that are gonna cost you way more and just, it's not worth it. It's not worth trying to steam these things down. I mean, some people can be real careful, but ultimately, I mean, you can see there's just, I mean, that's a full on computer here. You've got connections here. You know, even though they are watertight type connections, I mean, forcing high pressure water on them, you know, it potentially could cause an issue. You do have a work light that can be turned on from inside the cab up here. So if you're out here at nighttime, and then we'll walk around to the other side here. Down here at the bottom of the bumper, uh, that is the radar for the collision mitigation system. Um, if you are, that can get disabled in some certain uh, situations. One of those is driving in like snowy weather where uh, snow is building up on the front of the bumper. You know, you'll get an alert inside of the cab that it's disabled it because it's, it's blocked. So, I mean, that, but that's normal. I mean, you can get out and clean that off. Uh, the latest collision mitigation systems up there in the windshield do include a camera. Uh, that just makes those systems a lot more accurate than what the original systems were. There's your uh, windshield wiper fluid. Once again, translucent reservoir. You can easily see your coolant level. There's your toolless air filter. You can even see the little minder here if there's any restriction. So super easy. I mean, that's one of the, once again, biggest perk to a Super C is just straight up serviceability. You could take this thing to any commercial truck shop and they'll, they'll work on it, no problem. Uh, matter of fact, one of the things I always tell people when they're buying a Super C or like one of the Renegade products is the fact that you know don't look at this as an rv when it comes to the chassis look at it as a commercial truck so that when you have any kind of tire issues service issues you just want to get general maintenance always think commercial truck you call an rv place to get this thing towed they're going to come out and look at it and go oh i can't do anything with this so <laughs> it's a commercial truck that literally you know I, we also sell commercial trucks here that's the same tire i would put on a class 8 road tractor you know or a box truck or an aerial boom truck so i mean that's a that's a truck tire you know that's a truck wheel it's a 22.5 aluminum wheel so you know once again think like you're a truck i've got the hood down here so you can see an overall front view of the vehicle you do have led uh headlights and you've got fog lights down below you can see where you've got your side view camera here for inside of the cab when you're driving You've got lights that shine down over your step well at nighttime. And of course your chrome mounted mirrors. Those mirrors are designed to break away. So if you do whack them, you know, not at super high speeds, but if you, you know, bump into a tree or something, they will fold away to reduce the chances of damaging the door. Now the M2 chassis, which is what this is, it's a 106. Um, it's straddle fuel tank. So you've got a 50 gallon fuel tank on the driver and passenger side. You do need to fill both tanks at the same time. There is an Equiflow system that keeps the tanks balanced, but that is not designed to move mass amounts of fuel all at once. That's just to keep the tanks balanced. Basically what the engine does is it draws more fuel than what it needs. It sends that fuel equally back to the tanks. Um, 
and it always pulls more fuel from the tank that's fuller and so and then it sends it back equally to the tanks and then ultimately what happens is you end up with the equally balanced tanks over time. Up top you have a Girard roof mounted awning. It is armless. You have uh, tinted dual pane uh, thermal windows. Of course you have your exterior TV. It's got a sound bar down below. Renegade uh, custom builds their boxes in-house. Uh, so that is a steel box. They will hold, there's not really like an official number, but you could put a lot of bodies in there if you had to. I can promise you that much. There's a picture on the internet of me somewhere laying in one of these boxes. You know, they now have it to where this box passes through to the other box. So if you need to store something longer. Uh, another really neat thing that Renegade does is they dual, do the dual latch points uh, so that the doors stay closed a little bit better. And they're adjustable. A lot of times it's RV manufacturers weld these points and you can't adjust them. So if the doors get a little loose or these gaskets compress, it's not really much adjustments that can be done. But these are easily adjustable. You can usually tell if your doors need to be adjusted because you'll see like a little dirt line down here. And then if you start to see dirt spray like coming up the door, then you know that your door's probably pulling away from the seal a little bit. And just, you know, yourself or have a tech adjust those doors. This is the other side of that bay. That's your airline back there that comes with your coach. Uh, there is an air fitting on the battery bay on the other side to where you can inflate tires. These are your slide locks. You do have an outlet in this forward bay on the camp side. And of course there are also lights in the top. I've seen where people are putting like Star, uh, Starlink mount stuff in there where they can like wrap up their cords and they'll use that outlet and mount their modem and stuff down here. You know, for the people that don't necessarily want to roof mount their Starlink, you know, that way that, you know, I do a lot of forest type camping in our motorhome. And so I would want to be able to use my Starlink to where I could kind of move it out away from the RV to get it clear of the trees if I had to. Up there, that's the vent. The vent's from the back of the microwave, you know, for uh, cooking on the stovetop. Another storage bay. You can see where they, um, a few years ago, they started cutting the bays up underneath the rails to make it a little bit deeper for larger items. Of course, your rear slide for the bedroom that's on a Swintec. Another bay on the campsite. Once again, it's cut up underneath the rail pretty deep for larger items like longer chairs and tables. You know, for the most part, Renegade tries to keep the storage bays on this side of the coach open for storage. It's, it's just the most convenient. Just because, I mean, this is the side of the coach, your picnic table, and all your activities are going on. Another storage bay at the rear. Uh, another neat thing Renegade does, because we order these with the mud flaps for the rear. Right now, it's got the film still on there. That's actually a chrome mud flap on each side. Renegade on their rear cap does it in two separate pieces. So at the bottom here, this bottom chunk is a separate piece, separate from the rest of the fiberglass. Uh, ideally, if you ever, you know, not ideally, if it ever did happen and you backed into something and you bust that bottom corner, you only got to replace that bottom panel and not the entire rear cap. 20,000 pound hitch tow. You've got an auxiliary plug back here for your Voyager camera system. Uh, that way, if you have a uh, camera on a trailer, you can easily hook that up. Uh, and have a, you know the other camera functioning off the screen inside the coach. Of course, your seven-way plug as well. The small pipe down there is for the generator. That they bring your generator exhaust to the rear of the coach. Boy, with these allergies, I don't know if I'm going to make it through a whole loop on the coach here. Here's your power bay. You do have a uh, transverse automatic transfer switch with surge guard. You have an outlet back here. Uh, that is your hose reel, which is power retract. That is, of course, 50 amp. Now, what a lot of people don't understand on 50 amp is you've got two legs of 120 coming in. So each leg is 50 amp, meaning that you have 100 amps of usable power coming from the post, uh, which is 12,000 watts. That's a ton of power. I mean, you're not going to have any issues on your coach as far as running all your accessories, adding in additional stuff like hair dryers and coffee makers. You know, this coach will keep up with that all day long with the... Uh, the 15 amp shore running both your air conditioners. 
Uh, that back there is a dog bone that Renegade provides from 50 to 30 amp. Just keep in mind, and I, we could talk, I could do a whole two hour video on like, like electricity and electronics in an RV, but just keep in mind that when you dumb down from 50 amp to like to a 30 amp, you're only feeding half your coach with power, which is gonna be like your refrigerator, some outlets, charging circuits, and like your front air conditioner only. Um, and then of course your inverter is a hybrid inverter and it can actually offset those power needs. So, so if you even dumb it down to like a 15 amp and you're plugged in it like at a friend's house, then you, the inverter will actually kick in to help because you know 15 amp can only run a very small amount of appliances. Of course you have an 8,000 watt uh, generator on board. Now. We talked about that with shore at 50 amp, which is two legs of 50 amps, so 100 amps, 12,000 watts. Well, when you run off the generator, you've got 8,000 watts. Now that's still plenty of power. So now only thing you gotta be careful about when you're using generator only, you know, you do gotta be mindful of the adding on things, right? So you're adding on hair dryers, curling irons, coffee pots, you know, you just wanna be more mindful of what you've got running and not to overload the generator. You can start the generator from outside and there's also a breaker that's located right there in case you do trip the generator. You've got a sewer hose storage out here mounted next to the generator. Down here, the big exhaust pipe is the main pipe for the diesel engine. It's got that funky shape to it because that is for dispersing heat. Uh, when your these vehicles go into region, they do create quite a bit of heat. Then it allows that heat to disperse into the air and not be a concentrated force of heat. Of course, this unit has been winterized. We're getting into the warmer months, thankfully. Uh, but very simple, this unit, this is up here is where your whole house water filter connects uh, for the water that's incoming from your water hose down here. Um, you also, this coach is equipped with sea level too. A lot of the renegators have switched to that or much more appreciate that system. Uh, it works really well as far as telling you that your different levels um, and it's just extremely accurate. You have a low point drain, you have a spigot. Another thing I love about Renegade is the simplicity of when you are hooked up to city water, that either you are on tank fill or you are on city water. There is no like multiple valves you got to turn and twist different ways to create some kind of equation that allows you to do water a certain way. You're either filling your tank or you're running on city water. You do have access out of here to hook up to cable if you're in an RV park that supplies cable. This down here is just a water hose that you can add to your little spigot over here. Um, that's your black tank flush. It's got a little tornado valve in there that sprays down the sides of the tank. Uh, the black tanks stay pretty clean on Renegade just because you're told it's our macerators. Uh, so everything that's going to those tanks is finally ground down. Uh, and this bay is heated. Um, so during, if you're doing cold weather traveling like the ski and stuff, you can keep this bay from freezing. Um, one thing I do want to mention about water hookup is a lot of people like to use pressure regulators uh, at different RV parks and campgrounds. I do the same. Um, but don't dumb your water pressure all the way down to 40 PSI. Like run it all the way up to at least 60. You know, one thing you're gonna run into is you're starving your toilet, your macerator toilet for water. Um, no need to drop it down to 60, I mean down to 40. Uh, 60 is a great number to run. The lines on these coaches are rated for more than that um, and they will handle fine. You know, what you do wanna avoid is massive pressure spikes at RV campgrounds. You know, and the, I mean, I've seen as high as 100 plus, so keep that in mind. The little tailpipe down there is for your aqua hot. It's all on your diesel burner. I'm gonna have to go in and get keys, so bear with me. All right, I got my bays unlocked here. Um, so you have, that's your black tank right here. That is a 75 gallon black tank. And then on the other side here, you have a 75 gallon gray tank. Those are enclosed inside of those bays and they are heated. These sensor here go to your toilet. Um, so the toilets actually have their own sensors. There's lights on the toilet so they'll come on. Like when, so this is your 50% marker on the toilet. That's your 100% marker. When you hit 50%, the light will turn yellow. It'll turn red when you get to 100%. Um, the toilet will kind of try to protect itself from overflowing. What you want to keep in mind is the pipe that goes into the top of the black tank is slip seated so that it doesn't break. Uh, whenever it's, you know, you're about something down the road. So if you overfill your black tank, it will overflow into this bay. So not, no bueno. Uh, 
that's your sewer hookup for your gray and your black the valves are cable actuated from the wet bay over here uh, one of the things that I recommend for customers, and I usually go and buy it for my customers if I get around to it, is add a two foot, I'll put like a little clear fitting right here, a two foot, even sometimes an extra gate, just to have another stopping point for your waste. Cause you know, a lot of times you open up these caps and you get that poop drizzle coming out of there. So here, I'll put like a clear fitting extra gate and a little two foot hose. And that way I can drop that two foot hose through here before I actually hook up to my, my longer hose. And that way I'm getting it, all that connection out of the RV before I start undoing stuff so I don't worry about getting any residue or anything inside the bay. Like I said, this is your gray tank back here. You can see that cable valve back there. One of the things that does require adjustment with time is that little cable goes in here and it has a little set screw. Um, over time, this cable might stretch a little bit and it's just a matter of you know adjusting that set screw that it's, so it's actually pushing the gates all the way closed. You know, when, we, when I do a walk around with a customer at delivery, I mean, they last like four, six hours, and maybe even eight, depending on what your experience level is. Uh, but what I like to do, personally, is try to get my black tank to about 50%. And then if I know I'm gonna need my black, to dump my black tank based on usage, like I'll know like how often that is based on my family usage. And then, I, so if I know I'm gonna need to dump in a couple days or the night after, and like my family and I are gonna be showering or something like that, I'll close up the gray tank if I am somewhere where I'm hooked up to city sewer and let my gray tank fill up quite a bit so that when I go to dump my black tank first, you know, to dump all the waste out of it into the sewer system, I'll then dump the gray behind it because all that gray water will help flush all the stinky out of that hose and makes it a much cleaner process when you go to do all your waste dumping. People are always welcome to reach out to me with questions and you know, I've been RVing my whole life, whether it be with my family as a kid in a pop-up travel trailer, class, small Class C motorhome, um, to the motorhome that my family and my kids travel in today. This is your Aqua Hot 250. This is what provides you with heat inside the coach for keeping the coach warm, and that is also your instant hot water source. Uh, the biggest thing with any coach that has Aqua Hot is you cannot winterize with blowing air. You have to winterize using antifreeze, which is easily done from inside the coach. If you try to use air, you will not get all the water out of the aqua hot system. It will bust and freeze a copper pipe, and that is an extremely expensive repair. You, the aqua hot system does have a dedicated diesel fuel filter in the back, and that is your overflow for your glycol right there in that clear container. Biggest thing about aqua hot, and including your generator in the back, you got to use them. They they are not designed. They they got diesel fuel. Diesel is not the. It's not. It's a. It's a gunky fuel. It's it's oily. You know, if you let diesel sit, it'll gum stuff up. So you definitely want to exercise your aqua hot and your diesel generator every month. You want to you know work it and you know, or if it has been sitting for a while, like we're we're an aqua hot certified facility. I'm getting aqua hot certified myself this year. You know. If you're gonna get if it sits in storage, like if you're, you're gonna put your RV in storage for the year, don't get your Aqua Hot serviced in November. Get it serviced in March when you pull it out to start using it, or April, whenever you start hitting the road. In this bay right behind the battery bay, it's got your MPPT charge controller for your solar. You've got 600 watts of solar on the roof. There's a display back there that feeds you some details as far as you know how many. Um, amps that we're pushing versus like right now it's really cloudy so 1.53 amps um, but that's what's keeping your battery system charged from so, so the solar aspect uh, your batteries do get charged both sets of batteries do get charged from the alternator on the chassis of course from your generator and when you're hooked up to shore now this is a 3000 watt hybrid inverter that inverter does put off quite a bit of heat uh, so I'm not saying that you can't especially when it's in like bulk charging now I'm not saying you can't use that this bay to store anything, but don't stuff a bunch of beach blankets and towels and you know rugs and stuff in here. Like this is a great little bay to put you a toolbox, there's some tools just to have handy if you do need to work on your coach at all or, or fix something while you're traveling. I also highly recommend like the more self-sufficient you can be as far as how your RV works and operates, and you can fix little things, a lot easier traveling goes versus trying to. You know, uh, you know, 
you know, we're an RV dealership and we're happy to help customers. I take phone calls all hours of the night and day and weekends with people that have little issues here and there. Whether I sold them an RV or not, I get all kinds of phone calls. Um, you know, but still, at the end of the day, when, it, you know, when I'm traveling my RV and it's a Sunday afternoon, not a lot of options as far as getting service done. So it's kind of nice to be able to do some troubleshooting on your own. Uh, there's some great sources out there to get with other Renegators uh, to learn more about your coach. Now this is your battery bay, which is right behind the driver's door. Uh, on the left-hand side, those are your chassis batteries. That's what starts your main diesel engine. That right there is the battery management isolator. That is what uh, controls the charge between uh, the two batteries to keep them isolated so that when like the alternator is running, it's charging both batteries, but the two battery systems are separate. And the reason for that is to say if you drain down your house batteries, which are your lithium batteries on the right, you know, you still have starting batteries to get the engine running. So on the right hand side, the most important part is the coach batteries. Um, those are three 100 amp hour eternally heated lithium batteries. Uh, lithium does not like cold weather, so they kind of don't like to charge below freezing. They don't like to work at all below zero. So they are internally heated. They keep themselves warm. Another thing, now once again, I could talk forever about batteries. I just had a huge lithium conversion done on my motorhome myself and I mean I can even I can even run my front air conditioner so it's got a lot of lithium on it you know what's the beautiful thing about lithium is is the depth of discharge so you know if you got a hundred and hundred amp hour lead acid battery and you got a hundred amp hour lithium battery both are rated the same right well but the depth of discharge so you can run of course boy I hate to say this because someone's gonna probably contradict me on the internet i personally you know you can run a lithium battery down to 20 percent you know you can use 80 percent of that battery right no problem leave 20 percent left charge it back up you don't do any damage a lead acid battery like you can use about 40 percent of so half so even though both batteries are rated the same you're going to get twice the energy out of a lithium battery because of how far you can actually discharge it Another thing too, lithium is lighter, and lithium also charges back faster, and lithium has a longer lifespan. So there's just always huge bonuses to lithium. Even though there's a higher upfront cost, overall value as far as how much energy you can get out of them and how long they last, in my mind personally, in today's world, makes it well worth it. Uh, anything that's got the lithium batteries on it, it's gonna have Victron's battery monitor uh, that does allow you to track all the voltage on the batteries uh, and how much uh, percent of batteries you have left. Lithium batteries don't have the voltage sag that lead acid batteries do. So one of the things you'll notice on a coach that, you, that has lithium versus lead acid is like the fan, if you say if you have a fan in the bathroom um, or even lights in the coach, you'll notice they stay brighter, they don't ever dim down because the voltage sag on the lithium, it doesn't, they don't sag. Whereas in a lead acid battery, the voltage will sag a little bit with, as they deplete and charge, which means less voltage, which means fans are turning slower, and you just you'll see that from the battery system you don't see it on a lithium but since there isn't voltage sag it kind of makes it harder not that it can't be done it makes it harder to really look at the voltage and say oh i'm at 80 percent 70 percent so the easiest way to keep track of how much battery you have is just to use a battery monitor and what it's doing is just, it's, ma it's measuring every watt that goes into those batteries and it's measuring every watt that comes out and the battery monitor is telling me that I'm at 88.4%. So instead of trying to use voltage to determine state of charge, it is actually tracking all the watts that are coming in and out. Now, keep in mind, and of course, consult me if you need to on this. You know, anytime you add a, additional stuff to the coach, like if it's under lighting, you need to make sure you're running your ground through that uh, battery monitor or it won't track the watts coming in and out and it'll throw off your percentages. Uh, once again, you can consult us, ask questions, and we're happy to help. And then up there in that back left-hand corner, that's where you can tie into your chassis air for the air chuck. That way you can inflate tires. Uh, you know, you're not gonna run any impact or anything off of it. You will inflate uh, pool toys and stuff like that. On the driver's side of the coach, you know, you've got your uh, other tank, your 50 gallon fuel tank, and then you've got a block heater down here. And then of course you have your DEF on the far right over here, which is your blue cap. The biggest thing about your DEF is that you, when, whenever you're putting DEF in, especially if it's from a bottle source, whether it be uh, Lowe's or Walmart or a fuel station, 
that the seal in there is intact. There are have been stories where people go to Walmart, they buy depth, they put it in their diesel pickup truck, they put water back in it, they take it back in and return it. So you definitely want to make sure you're putting quality, high level depth in there. You know, if you put the wrong thing in there, like diesel fuel by chance, which somehow I don't know how it happens, but it does. You could potentially cost yourself six, seven, eight thousand dollars in damages to the emission system that have to be fixed because this thing won't run and the emission system's not operating correctly. And then we're back around to the front hood on the driver's side. And at this point, uh, we'll look under the coach real quick at the leveling system and then we'll go inside. So we are underneath the coach right now. Uh, it does have equalizer system. It's a auto four point leveling system, hydraulic up and down. So if you're one of those that likes to do the racetracks and stuff where you might get in mud or dirt, you do have hydraulically jacks that are pulling up out of that dirt. You know, there are stories where they do get stuck. Uh, another thing that's nice about this coach is Renegade does provide a automatic, there's a switch in the dash that will drop the um, rear air so that if you're higher in the rear for whatever reason, you can drop that down first, then level. Um, I don't care what brand leveling system that you get. So as we go into the coach, I love the fact that the steps go up underneath. That's one of the biggest pains I have on my motorhome. It's like, where the heck do I put my shoes? So there's a nice little cubby spot to tuck your shoes up on there as you're going into your coach. And then as you come on the left here, you can see that you have your battery disconnect switch for the actual coach side to disconnect those lithium batteries. You have a step override switch, which allows you to, you know, so that when you're opening and closing the coach door, the steps aren't going in and out and then you got an e-start. That's that switch that allows you to tie the two groups of batteries together in case you were to discharge one battery set and want to be able to like start the generator off the other set of batteries or start your main diesel engine off the other set. It just gives you that uh, kind of an emergency situation to where you can try to get something back up and running if you deplete a battery. Right as we walk into the coach here, you see the first control panel. This is a multi multiplex, <laughs> it's a multiplex system. Uh, the way to look at all these control panels, they're remotes. So this sends a wireless signal that travels over there to the panel on the wall, which is a colored display. And what that does is it allows you to be able to control lights and functions from multiple locations and not just a single switch, kind of like your older, older style coaches. So for example, if I've left a light on in the be bedroom in the back and I'm walking out the door for the day to go get me a glass of wine or a thing of bourbon, you know, if I'm stopped at a, a Oh, I lost what the word is for it. Harvest host. You know, I can just hit the all off switch and that turns every light off inside the coach without having to walk all the way back to the back. Once again, we'll go back here and we'll turn all our lights back on. Any of the lights that have an up and down arrow are dimmable. And then, of course, you have extend and retract on your awning on this particular touch panel. Corian, uh, Corian this is the Athens interior. Corian countertops, hardwood maple cabinetry. got plenty of storage you know one cool fact about the renegades is they don't have a big pile of cabinets sitting in the warehouse you know the carpenters come in they measure this coach after the walls and stuff are put in and a set of cabinets is built specifically for this unit because there's a little bit of tolerance between how one unit may build out versus another uh, and one thing i should mention what makes renegade to me number one value to a renegade has nothing to do with that fireplace or that TV or you know all the fancy stuff you get with a Renegade. It's the structure. Uh, Renegade is a nine inch super sandwich floor. It is uh, three inch steel beams, galvanized vapor barrier. So for rodents and stuff coming into the coach. Um, so three inch steel beams, two inch steel trusses, 
uh, double stack two by fours, three quarter inch plywood floor, and it uses a wool quality uh, insulation material, which has a high sound deadening quality, not along with thermal quality. Uh, so this coat, even though a lot of people assume like, oh, it's on a Freightliner M2 chassis. Well, that doesn't mean it drives the same. So like I highly recommend to people besides doing factory tours and all, all us salespeople have to say is, is drive them. I mean, an M2 on one brand and an M2 on another, They'll drive different, sound different, shake different, rattle different. You know, there's definitely a great solid feel to a Renegade. I mean, their walls are two inch vacuum bonded aluminum tube structure, solid exterior fiberglass. It's a thick fiberglass. Other manufacturers can claim that one piece fiberglass wall, but it's a sheet of paper. Same thing with the roof. You know, the, the wall, the roofs are two inch vacuum bonded aluminum tube structure. It's that thick fiberglass. You walk on the roof, it feels like a deck. You can look at other brand RVs and you can see the rib structure going across because the fiberglass is so thin. So definitely structure to me is the number one benefit to a Renegade by far. Standard stuff as far as like your stainless steel sink, faucet. Of course you got day, uh, day and night shades. You got more storage up here. Here's the books that come with your Renegade. Here's the binder that Renegade sends you. If you've got one of these binders in your Renegade or watching this, the first sheet is a great resource. It has all the parts that are on your RV with serial numbers. And then as far as like, if you wanted to read anything, which covers a lot of the stuff I talk about in this video, it's this very front section here, reporting safety defects in like this first chunk right here before you get into like the actual manuals like TV and AV, is this right here. This is good information, a lot of stuff in here. Like if something's not working, the easy thing to check first is probably listed in here for common, you know, common things to check. You know, a lot of, before you get into like, okay, this does actually require a technician. So you've got a convection microwave. The convection microwave will run off the inverter, uh, so you don't have to turn up your generator. Uh, of course, you have a true induction cooktop. It does require special pots and pans. A lot of people know that, but some don't. Um, I, there's a couple sets of cookware that I actually recommend if anybody wants to reach out to me. Uh, they pack down real nice, so they don't rattle a whole lot. Up here, more storage. We'll get you a look inside your microwave. You got tons of space to bake in microwave. Of course, you got storage drawers down here. Um, there's all your remotes that come with your rig. That's your, you know, all Renegades come with your paint for matching up chips and stuff if necessary. There's a filter that Renegade provides to go in your whole house water filter. This right here is your mechanic's best friend or your best friend as far as maintenance on your RV. This right here can lube every moving part on your RV. So if it's the gears on your Swintec slide, if it's the slide mechanisms on your rack and pinion slide behind me, the steps that you're tracked in and out this is great stuff this is a great lubricant to use uh, just to keep everything wa well, working nice and smoothly definitely keep a can of that in your rv at all times you got some storage down here you got the waste basket and this is their uh, little cutting board deal that renegade came up with that's really neat basically you pull that cutting board out you pull this out, which has got some nice storage to it, and then that cutting board sits right across the top here. It gives you more additional counter space to work off of. Of course, all your drawers are soft close. So we'll go up here and we'll talk about our Firefly system, which this is what controls everything on the coach. So when we go to our home screen, you know, you've got a master light on and off. Of course, you've got your fresh gray and black tank levels, your tank heaters for gray and black, turn on your water pump, your house voltage, chassis voltage, start and stop your generator. Of course, AGS disable, your in-motion satellite on the roof on and off, your AquaHot system fuel sources, which are required to use AquaHot. You either tell the AquaHot system it's allowed to use diesel, which is your burner, or it's used electric or both. Now the AquaHot system will automatically pick between the two based on demand. So say if you hooked up to an RV resort and you've got electric and the burner on, if electric can keep up with the demand, it'll just run off electric. 
but you say you'll take a hot shower and you're trying to heat the coach in cool weather, the burner may kick in to help supplement and heat that water or heat that glycol that's heating the coach. Of course, your, all your lights that are on your coach, like I said, everything on the up and down arrow is dimmable. Um, what's really neat too is if you hold down the light, the lights will dim down. If I hit off on here, all my lights turned off in the coach. If I hit on, they return to the previous state of where I had them dimmed to. Now, if I hold the on button, everything goes back to full brightness. So that's pretty neat just to, you know, how the system works and has so much functionality. And then there's your electrical panel. Right now I'm not hooked up to any shore or anything, so I'm working off inverter energy uh, for like with the refrigerator and the microwave. Of course it shows your transfer switch, another spot to start and stop your generator. Uh, of course your voltage information. Right now inverter is enabled. We're not charging because we don't have a generator or anything running. By the way, while I'm thinking about the generator, that's another thing. Where Renegade's floor is nine inches thick and has that home grade insulation and that wool material in it, the generator is so quiet inside the coach because it it is a great sound barrier. And so you know you can easily boondock in this rig or be off grid without having to be hooked up to shore power, and don't feel like you have this obnoxious generator running. It's very very quiet. Like above and beyond just the fact that it's a quiet diesel generator, like you just have even. The coach itself is insulating it too. You go into AGS, which is your auto gen start settings. You know, you can tell the generator to automatically fire up based on two triggers. It's low volt and HVAC. You can set quiet hours that you don't want the generator to come on. So say if you are in a, a place like a national park where you can't, generator can't run from eight to eight or something like that, you can tell it not to. And then these other settings over here, I really wouldn't mess with, but it is set to start at 11.9 volts. You know, there's a, start at volt you know minimum run time you know when you anytime you fire up a generator you don't want to just turn it right back off you do want to let it run for a little bit and cycle before you kick it back off and then maximum generator retries is four that's how they've got it set reason main reason for that is is the generator has no idea how much fuel is in the tanks so if you draw it down to a quarter tank and the generator can no longer pull fuel from the fuel tanks it just won't sit back there and crank until it kills the battery and of course HVAC load, you set HVAC load and that's going to be determined on what you've got your actual HVAC set on. So if it starts, you got a pet in the RV and the temperature starts to rise, the generator will fire up to maintain a cooler temperature inside the coach. Um, Firefly does make an accessory that you can add for Wi-Fi enabling this device. We have done it in our shop and it basically allows you to control your RV from anywhere with internet access. Uh, another way people do it, which is the poor man's way of doing it, it works really well, I shouldn't really say poor man's. But people will buy like a cheap, because you can attach a phone to this or a tablet. They'll buy like an Android device, and like just a lower end Android tablet. And they'll connect it to this to have like a mobile display to control stuff in their coach. But then there's like apps you can buy for mirroring. And so you can, if you have Wi-Fi at the coach, you can put a mirroring app on your Android tablet you're using. And then put that same app like on your iPhone. And then through the internet on your phone and the internet on your coach, you can still control and see the system like remotely. So that's like... A way cheaper way to do it than using the Firefly integrated Wi-Fi system. Some people had some issues with the early generations of the integrated Wi-Fi system from Firefly. The last one we installed worked really well. Uh, let's see, we go in here in HVAC. So you've got a front system and a rear system. You have two 15,000 BTU heat pumps. Uh, so you got one in the rear, you've got one in the front. The uh, heat pump is good to about 50 degrees in my personal opinion. Uh, of course, you have your aqua hot heat, uh, and then of course you have auto. I, a lot of people don't like using the auto for the system because they don't want the RV to decide how to heat the coach. I personally would be using my aqua hot if I could because it's a lot quieter than the heat pump. And then obviously, if I'm going to be cooling the coach, I'm just using the air conditioners on the roof. Once again, another spot where you can, you know, I can turn on aqua hot, right? No source. Well, I gotta tell the Aqua Hot it's allowed to use fuel or use electric. It just won't automatically do it on its own. It's a safety feature. And then you can go into bay here and you can control the temperature inside the bay. And there's your ability, to, you know, to obviously you gotta have the Aqua Hot function running to keep that bay, that bay heated. The allergies are killing me. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best here, people. Um, so then we have our fans. You've got a rear bath fan, a front bath fan, up and down, you know, slow, medium, high, and speed, pretty self-explanatory. 
explanatory. The fans, as they come on the Renegades, are not usable in rain or really driving down the road. Uh, I could do it here. It's no big deal. There are covers that you can add under those. They're already pre-drilled for them. It's just putting on four little brackets and putting a little carter pin, and then you can now use your fans in the rain uh, or driving down the road. Those those covers range from like 50 to 100 bucks, depending on which one you want. Like one's a solid black, which is like 50. They have a smoke color one that's like closer to 100, I think. It takes me like 20 minutes to install one. Uh, then you have your slide control. So for extending and retracting your slides, uh, same thing. You've got uh, your window shade up front or your cab over bunk, which is controlled electronically up and down. And then we go into our settings. Um, you know, here's where you go to your mobile app to download the QR code uh, and there's your ID and pin so you can set your phone up to control your coach. That way you can run your slides when you're standing outside, jacks, literally everything. Um, we go back to settings. Uh, obviously, if you're using quiet hours on your generator, your time needs to be set correctly. Cleaning mode, you just hit that. It locks the screen. You can clean it so none of the buttons are getting pushed. Of course, your screen brightness. Um, the other thing that really, I wouldn't really use diagnostic stuff. That really is something more for a technician unless you're like super educated. Uh, but switch panel info is nice to know because if you are having issues with a switch panel, it's not communicating with your Firefly. Some of those switch panels are 12 volt hardwired. Some of them have batteries in them. You know, you can go here and you can see each switch, uh, sweep, whoop. <laughs> you can see each switch panel that is connected to this Firefly device uh, and how strong those signals are. So the entry one's a little bit lower legitimately it's probably because I'm standing between that uh, remote and the Firefly system because they you can't have interference issues some of the early generation of Renegades only had the one Firefly system well look what's right next to it the refrigerator on a lot of the floor plans and so any of the switches that were in the back of the coach would have would have intermittent issues uh, talking to the screen up here and so to combat that issue every switch on this side of the refrigerator is on this switch panel and then every switch on the other side of the refrigerator is on the other switch panel. And anyway, that's completely eliminated any of those issues. And of course, you have a full residential refrigerator. Uh, nice thing about residential refrigerators, you got a lot more space in them than RV refrigerators. You don't have that gas system in the back. Uh, one, it's a, it's a standard refri uh, residential refrigerator. So if you have your coach for 10 years or the refrigerator dies, easy to replace. You can take the doors off or go out the coach door and you can replace it out. It's got fridge locks that have been added to it. You have a nice deep drawer here for storage in there. You've also got an ice maker. Um, the valve for the ice maker is that back there in the back. If you want to bypass the ice maker so you don't have water going through it. Up here is the control panel for your wine guard system. Um, that one is for the... I can't wait powered antenna on the left and this is for your whole Wi-Fi system on the roof so you can use your Wi-Fi system on the roof with a SIM card um, but a lot of people are using Starlink and other sources today but now if you are at an RV resort you can use that Wi-Fi system to boost the signal at that place now if you are hooked up to cable TV uh, at an RV resort this has to be off for that cable signal to come through to feed your TVs uh, there is an HDMI cord up there which is designed to use with a satellite box um, if you're not using a satellite box, you can plug anything you want into that. And that HDMI cord on a VRB and on several of the other floor plans will not only feed the interior TV, it also mirrors it on the outside TV. So if you're trying to tailgate or something like that. Uh, you do have a smart TV uh, in the main living room with a sound bar. We did opt for the option on a fireplace in this unit. You got some storage up here above your TV. Here is your half bath in the midship of the coach. You do have a big, nice, deep storage here behind the mirror. There's your macerator toilet. The thing about macerator toilets, they have a grinder in them. So if you've got grandkids that play with Hot Wheels and Legos, that is no bueno on your toilet. It will destroy it uh, because there is a grinder in there that pulls through, you know, pulls all your waste through. They work extremely well. Nice thing about macerator toilets too is they use a three-quarter inch line that pump all that waste to that black tank. You get, I mean, very few renegators ever complain about any kind of odor because it's not just a flat with a vapor barrier over a black tank that's right underneath the toilet. It's actually being pumped over to that black tank. 
So much cleaner, less smell inside the coach than their traditional RV. And you're just, you're, I mean, some people even claim they're not even using deodorizers. Like the, it works so well, they don't have the deodorizer. Now I would still use a liquid deodorizer to keep the matter in the tank broke down even more, even though you're macerating it, just so you, you know, you don't get built up on the tanks over the years. And then you just have a push button for eco, uh, normal, or if you want to empty the tanks for transit. Link out is like number one, number two, and travel. Of course, you've got storage down here. We've got a uh, right here on this side. We've got pantry storage. And then down below here, they've got a lot of electronics and stuff that are stashed in here behind the wall. You got to have a place for all that stuff. It's got a diagram of all your electronics that are on the coach. It's got you have one year roadside assistant with a new Renegade. It's got the paint colors, uh, customer service information for Renegade right there. Of course, your 12 volt fuses are right here. What's really easy to understand about the Renegades are when it, on the breaker panel where it says inverter output. That tells you that everything that's on this breaker panel is on the inverter. So AV TV, the cap up front, front slide up, bedroom receptacles, rear slide out, refrigerator, passenger side receptacle, bath GFI, driver's side, microwave, kitchen, outside entertainment center, and subwoofer all can run off the inverter. If you look at the bottom, everything down there it requires either the generator to be running or hooked up to shore power, which makes sense. It's all the heavy load items like your front AC, your dryer, your rear AC, your aqua hot electric, your fireplace, you know, living room bed receptacle, the range, and the washer. These little black dots you see in the coaches, those are temperature sensors. Uh, that way you get a nice average temperature, middle level in the coach, you know, for whatever you've got your HVAC set on. And then, of course, you do have a washer and dryer. Washer and dryer prep comes standard on a Renegade. Um, for the models that offer washer and dryer, like uh, Valencia and Verona, Verona LE, Explorer, and above. Um, but you, it's an option that we add. Uh, most people like having a washer and dryer for just doing light laundry, as far as like whites and underwear, and maybe drying an occasional beach towel. Uh, you do have a separate dryer below. I'll take that back. I think I just told you backwards. Ooh. That is your that is your washer. So bottom, sorry, my wife does a lot of the laundry. Don't tell her that. So <laughs> uh, that's your washer down here at the bottom. Uh, you know, I don't have any personal experience with uh, the combination washer and dryers, but people who have had them in other motorhomes say that the combination units just do not work that well. Um, whereas these actually work halfway decent, even though the dryer is still only a 120 dryer and it's, you know, not a 240. Of course, you've got a king size bed in here. You can see no one of those temperature sensors there in the back. Right here, you can see that other firefly screen that's talking about that's in the back so that you separate the, the control panels on the rear from the front, you know, so you don't have the fridge in between. Um, so king size bed, you've got a control panel up above the bed there. Of course, you got more cabinets. You got your 15,000 BTU heat pump. All the AC stuff is ducted throughout the coach. Um, one thing that, we, man, there's controversial information on the internet about it. I've got a soft start uh, on my air conditioner in my RV. Uh, if you're a super light sleeper, you know, there could be a lot of value in having us or somebody add the soft start. And what it does is it, when the air conditioner kicks on, it takes that big thump out of it, like the doom when it kicks on to, you know, start cooling. Uh, and makes it a much calmer, like, like blowing noise, you know. So if you want, if you are with a light sleeper and don't like that, there are, you know, that that uh, soft start. Some people, sw there's a lot of controversy on the soft start stuff, like whether it does any damage long term to your air conditioner or shortens the lifespan. Like there's really nothing out there that proves it otherwise. So it's just kind of your opinion. If you're a light sleeper, though, probably well worth it on the rear unit at least. Of course, you've got an entertainment bay back here, which is what feeds uh, the TV that's above the emergency window. Uh, another nice thing about the VRB floor plan is you do have windows that are aside the bed here. They do open, uh, so if you are in some places with nice climate weather, you can easily open those up, turn on a fan, and pull a lot of fresh air through, which is how I like to sleep when we're somewhere really beautiful with nice weather. 
it's getting kind of personal sorry so uh you got wardrobes here to hang your stuff uh of course a lot more drawers and cabinetry as far as storage no shortage of storage i promise if you can't if this is not enough storage you got a problem i guess you could get a trailer just for clothes and stuff but uh you do have a transit lock here on the door uh it is also held by a magnet as well uh, you can completely close off this bedroom. You have a standing shower with a skylight above. Uh, the nozzle on the the door, the sprayer here does have a quick on and off. So if you are boondocking and you're trying to conserve water, you can quickly turn the water on and off once you get your temperature set. Um, along with annual inspection stuff, as far as like you know, I personally recommend doing the aqua hot generator chassis. Have your roof looked at, you know, all in the spring, just once a year is a good thing to do. Um, you know, having your oil changes and stuff done. That's also a good spot to have checked every year. It's a covered panel at the bottom of the shower. These things bounce up and down the road. It's possible that something could shake loose or cause a small leak. You know, pull that off, have somebody look across with a flashlight, just make sure everything looks good on the bottom of the shower. You've got another master rotor toilet in the rear of the VRB. Of course, way more storage. <laughs> Another vanity, a lot more cabinet space. Um, so definitely a very nice floor plan, extremely popular. Your uh, for your toilet paper holders right there inside the door, across from the toilet. And let me, I'm gonna turn this off here, and I'm gonna open, pull this bed up, and then we'll get. Up. So I've got the bed up here, and this speaks to Renegade's quality. I mean, you could just see how much structure there is to this bed platform that slides out with the swing tech. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of weight on this swing tech slide because it's just the top part of the bed that slides over these nylon rails. If your fresh water is inside the coach, you have two 75 gallon roto molded tanks. It's the same way they build a whitewater kayak. Um, hard to break. I mean, it's just, you're not going to bust that tank. You can see one of your radiators right here for the aqua hot system. That's how you, you know, heat your coach. That hot glycol comes through that radiator. The fans blow the air across it. And that's what circulates the heat. The huge advantage to the aqua hot system is it equally heats the air really well compared to like a propane furnace. So if you measure the temperature at the floor and measure the temperature at the ceiling, those two numbers are very close together versus far apart. Um, another nice thing about Renegade is, of course, you got your water pump down here. But you've also got a super easy way to winterize your coach. So you just take that clear hose that's right there coming out of that pipe. You put that in a five-gallon bucket of antifreeze. You flip the little valve on the side there. And then when you turn on your water pump, it pulls the antifreeze from the bucket. And you can go around and turn all your faucets on and make sure to all, you know, you pull antifreeze through your hot water lines and through all your cold water lines. Super easy. And make it the really easy process to winterize your coach. I'm working my way back towards the front here, down the left side as I'm headed, you know, walking towards the front. Yeah, walking towards the front. <laughs> I cover a lot of stuff in these videos. I think people like my videos. I get a lot of positive, positive feedback in my videos. But this is not designed to be a quick, like, look how pretty, like what color it comes in. This is designed to really give people, to show them the value of a Renegade, like what you're buying. I sold my own mother a Renegade. <laughs> I mean, she loves that thing. They're, I mean, they'll, they'll actually be at the Georgia rally that's coming up. So say hi if you see a, a, a Jackie Coverline. Just give her a shout out. She's a go. She's good. She's a good mom. Couldn't ask for a better mom. Um, so this unit was equipped with a couch that does make a queen size bed. It does jackknife out. Um, those cushions just come off, and then you know you flip your bed out and flip it over, and then you put the cushions back against the wall. Uh, but it makes a great bed uh, source for somebody. You know if that's what you want to do. Um, of course, you've got cabinetry storage all across the top here. Really deep. And then you also, um, you've got, uh, of course, your dinette here. I'm a big fan of the dinette table versus the table and chairs. Don't I just, I don't know. I just like sitting at a booth. I'm the same way at a restaurant. So <laughs> you've got an outlet here against the wall. And, and of course, they added these integrated cup holders and stuff, which is nice for travel. Um, you know, they don't recommend anybody sitting rear facing for travel, but you do have seat belts in the couch. You do have, so you have uh, seat belts on the couch. You got seat belts here. And of course, you got seat belts in the front in your two captain's chairs. Um, and then, of course, you also have storage that is underneath um, the dinette. 
That's the cushions to turn that into a bed. If you're not ever going to use that as a bed, you can leave those cushions at home and use that for additional storage. Uh, the biggest tip on the table when you do, are turning it into a bed is that when you unlatch the lever, do not push on the end of the table. It binds it against the wall. If you reach across into the middle of the table, the table will push nice and easy straight down. And then you can just pull up on the end. Of course, you've got a cab over bunk on this unit. It's a solid piece of fiberglass. That window that's up there is automotive grade windshield. So as far as rock chips or anything like that, hail, it's a lot more durable glass than a typical window. Uh, you've got a control point up here for whoever's in this area. You've got uh, plug-in and USB stuff up here as well. Um, what's really neat about the Renegade is the fact that they didn't make this like a solid bunk across here. You know, it actually slides in, so it's still very easy. Even with a cab over bunk, it's very... I would not order or buy one without a cab over bunk, personally. I mean, it's personal preference, but they made it so convenient to kind of multi-purpose use, and it doesn't affect your ability to get into the driver's seat, and the fact that it doesn't look bad. Like, a lot of cab over bunks don't look good. They're just, like, retro, and they, they just make... Oh, it looks like a typical RV and not, like, sleek. Renegade did a great job of making their cab over bunk look very sleek. And then the fact that you can push it in. I have seen several customers, they'll take this mattress out, put it away in storage somewhere, and they'll put some nice, like, decorative wicker baskets across here. And that gives them storage for blankets and pillows and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's, it's really not in the way. I mean, you're not giving up anything really by doing a cab over bunk. Of course, we order it with the TV up here for the person that is sleeping up here. Um, it's just, that's not an easy TV to add after the fact. So we always order it with it. And then it's easy just to grab this and slide it across and then as you can see and then that up there would just flip over and you have a full bed up there man growing up we had an rv with a cab over bunk and like that was my spot to sleep because i was up out of the way you know if a family got up and they were shuffling around or making coffee pancakes you know i just would I'd just hang up there out of the way and of course you know, i'd be leaning off the end over here on my pillow like chit chat with people it was just it's a nice space especially for you know if you got older kids and stuff like that to kind of have their own little space in the motorhome this is the Freightliner M2 Plus cab. It does have the steering wheel controls. Uh, one thing you do give up on the Freightliner M2 Plus cab though is it does not have adaptive cruise control. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are stating that it did and it does not. Uh, you just have the collision mitigation for you know, p potentially avoiding having a wreck. You know, If you're looking down or grabbing something you dropped, you know, it will bump the brakes and slow the vehicle down if it needs to. The new seats they put in the Renegades are super nice. Um, they've got a little more bolster to them to the front and then we'll come on down in here so we're looking at the, the dash here and so uh, you know emergency flashers cab step lights footwell lights the work light underneath the, the, the hood uh, another lights that come probably the, the docking lights on the rear the trailer switch between truck and trailer on the rear uh, if you do want to dump the air on the rear of the RV first before you uh, level, that's where you would do that. Locking differentials, you can lock your uh, locking differentials in the rear together. Just keep in mind that is for driving straight and slow only. Because uh, believe it or not, when you're turning, uh, one set of wheels does turn slower than the other, if you think about it. Um, another point up here to control the equalizer system, of course, your HVAC controls. Uh, the uh, Of course, this removes... So you control your system. You've got your steering wheel controls here. So uh, speed controls. You got some volume up and down menu through your gauge cluster up here. Uh, you're not going to do a ton in the gauge cluster up here. Um, you know this truck, this M2106 truck, for the most part, is getting used for commercial trucks, not RVs. <laughs> this is kind of like a small piece of the business in reality, not to knock anybody. But you know, there's a lot of stuff we do in the trucking industry. That we want to do to integrate into the trucks for truck driver purposes and so that's why the main reason why freightliner updated their dash was to be able to electronically integrate more technology you know we're getting into a world where we're getting you know there's autonomous trucks that do exist that are being tested and that requires a more complicated electrical system uh and more functionality inside the truck so and we're talking about trucks that drive themselves and there's a couple methods behind um autonomous trucks as far as like you know the one method is they use a particular route where it's got like a landing pad a and a landing pad b and they basically only go between the two landing pads back and forth 
course, the driver still has to be present in the truck. Then you've got the convoy method where you do have a guy that's completely operating in a truck in the front. The other trucks are automatically following suit behind that lead truck. So definitely some cool stuff going on in the industry, but that's really what drove the whole integration update and electronic update from Freightliner. This was not a, ooh, we got to do this for the RV industry. If you do get any emissions lights that come on, uh, those are all labeled up here on the visor, and you can read the details about them. Uh, odds are you shouldn't have a lot of emissions issues as far as like your diesel particulate filter. And the reason I say that is you're an RV, you're always heavy, and the, the advantage to that is your engine's going to burn hot and clean, and so that's ideal. You know, the, what you don't want a diesel engine to do is to idle and putt around town. So like bad applications for diesel engines that we have struggles with are like school buses because they just they don't ever really get up to a lot of speed. Um, aerial boom trucks that park on the side of the highway working on or in your neighborhood working on your power lines they run they idle that engine all day to run hydraulics to run a boom so like in the rv world it's like perfect for diesel you're heavy you're loaded all the time you're up and down the highway like it's going to burn clean you won't ever need to do a manual regen if you do like call me because i want to know what the heck you're doing um in the gauge cluster you know you're going to have yellow engine lights yellow en engine lights are more informative than anything um yes get them addressed with time but don't feel like you have to rush into a dealership like if you're on a trip if you don't hear see or feel anything different keep on driving that's what i do i had a yellow light come on in my motorhome i drove from kentucky to maine and back and then got it addressed so and i didn't have the first issue my cruise control it was it actually ended up being a front right wheel sensor and my cruise control kept kicking out but I was fine. I still did my trip, and I didn't want to have to lose a day or two on my trip, you know, at a dealership. You know, that had been, like, best-case scenario. <laughs> um, now, if there are red light engine indicators, uh, those are severe fault codes. They can severely damage your vehicle. A perfect, simple example of severe severe fault code is you blow a radiator line, and you lose all your coolant, your motor will blow up. And so in those cases, when you see a red engine light, you need to get off the highway as soon as possible safely. So your safety is always number one. You know, don't worry about your motorhome. Um, but it isn't like, well, I'm going to go to the next exit after that one to get, you know, to stop there. Like, no, if there's an exit coming up and it's, there's nothing at that exit, but you can get to a safe spot off the highway on the ramp or whatever, do it. Get a record to get you to where you need to go at that point. You're, you're risking catastrophic engine failure and doing, I mean, 40, 50. So you could do a lot of money and damages to a motor. Um, let the last thing I will talk about here. I'll actually flip it around here. So the la last thing I'll talk about is maybe some modifications. Customers always ask me like, well, what modifications do you recommend the most? Number one, without a doubt, I personally recommend taking the camera system out of this. And the reason I say that is you use this for your radio, you use this for RV specific navigation. If you have your camera up, like for rear backup, which a lot of people like to do, and or you're using it for navigation, and you flip your blinker, like your navigation goes away, and you're in four lanes of traffic in Los Angeles, San Diego, Miami, you know, Atlanta. <laughs> so it's, you know, I would recommend doing a dedicated camera monitor. Um, with the new Freightliner M2- uh, they changed this header up here. We can put a really nice, like, uh, nine-inch ram track flush right here, and so I can. We can then run the wires for a dedicated camera screen right out from under here. Don't even have to drill a single hole, and then we can drop down a camera screen right here, uh, which basically acts like a rear-view mirror. Um, this collision mitigation system is already there, so you're not losing windshield. Um, and so we can drop it right there. You can slide it back and forth on that track wherever you want to do it. You can do it head and straight on so both people can see it. You can bring it over here and tilt it so you're looking right at it. Um, we like, if we're only doing a camera screen swap, I personally, and I've, they've, I've been caught on the internet in different people's opinion, if we're just swapping down a camera screen, I would do the Voyager camera screen. You go with the Voyager cameras. It's, they're proud of their prices. You know, I think we do it for $1,400 here. Um, but it doesn't fail. It works. It always works. I mean, so, and what I like about the Voyager camera screen, it's not a touch screen. It's got buttons on it. I, touch screen is cool, right? But there's just some things that should be a button. In my opinion, radio volume should be a button. That way I don't have to look. I can just grab, fill the button, turn it, volume up and down versus looking for a 
place on the screen to punch. Um, so I can reach over on the button on the screen and I can flip between my side cameras and my rear camera and it's just really easy to do. Um, now there's some other camera systems. If you want to add functionality and like a forward facing camera, then at that point we're talking about doing a complete camera switch out. So we're going to switch out all your camera heads uh, to something that has a little bit better night vision. Uh, we're going to add a camera to the front and it's going to have something that's got DVR function. So uh, I personally have that camera system on my rig. It's not really for driving as much as uh, Cracker Barrel. I had a guy trying to steal electric e-bikes off the back of my RV. I was laying there and felt the RV shake. I thought, oh, maybe it's windy. And then I look out the window and I'm like, oh, the leaves aren't even budging. So I'm like, eh, somebody, somebody's back there <laughs> trying to upgrade their bicycle. So I you know, went out the door and said, hey, get out of here. And then uh, I was at a truck stop in New York and uh, a guy clipped the bars on my tow car. So I felt the jerk while I was sleeping and came out. And of course, that guy was like, no, 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 no. I didn't do nothing, you know. So you know the, I, to me the dvr function is what i want so i can see what's going on inside my coach because i do a lot of boondocking batch pro shops just all over the place so that's just a nice thing to have um and then obviously if you're going to be like the war the driving warrior and you're really going to do some serious drive not two hours a day but if you're going to be driving like six seven hundred miles a day there are some seat upgrades that are a little nicer as far as like supportive additional lumbar um they're more firmer like something more it's just more designed for that long driving. I know a lot of you renegaders aren't doing that when they're, you're retired or traveling, but you got some guys that like on the weekends they head out and they're headed to a race and they're gonna drive seven, 800 miles. There are some seats that are a little bit better. Once again, I, my name is Kyle Coverline, part of the sales team at Bluegrass International. Please like, comment, subscribe on our videos. This is supposed to be helpful. Uh, if there's anything I can ever do, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm available via email, phone call. Uh, you talk to me. I'm a real person. Um, people always seem shocked when they actually get to talk to me. I'm like, I'm just a real person on the internet, like talking about Renegades. And, you know, we're a Renegade dealer here for Kentucky. Um, but, uh, yeah, please feel free to reach out to me, like, and subscribe to our channel. Um, and, you know, we're good, honest people. We, we, we're we straight shooters, transparent. We try to make things pretty easy. There's no hidden games we play. We don't mess with. We still do. We're just pretty transparent. So uh, if you need anything, just let me know. Call anytime.